What's up, my friends? This is Post Production Pi, editor in chief for srlounge.com. Welcome to another installment of our weekly Ordinary to Extraordinary Raw Edit featuring the Lightroom Preset System V5. Now, as always, we're going to be demonstrating first how to create our effect using the preset system, and then we're going to be going back through the actual develop settings to help everyone understand what's going into each look and effect. This way, we're kind of helping everybody. Those that have the presets benefit, those that don't have the presets can benefit as well from each tutorial. Now, if you don't have the presets and you are interested in learning more, then be sure to check out the Lightroom preset system by clicking the link below in the description. It'll take you right over to the SR Lounge store where you can read more and potentially become one of our many happy users. All right, so that's done. I'm done talking now. Let's get started. In the last image, we created a nice punchy vintage fade to this bridal portrait right here. And by the way, we're not saving out all these into my Mixology folder because, you know, my Mixology is for me. So uh, if I don't want to keep something, I don't want to keep it. I'm just kidding. Uh, keep whatever you guys want and then whatever you don't, you know, feel free to not save every single time. We didn't save this one. If you want to, you can do it at this point uh, or just go back and watch the last video and then save it out to your my Mixology folder. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to customize my Mimixology later on just for me personally. All right, so let's go back to our image here that we're working on. Now, what we're going to do here is we created kind of that nice modern vibe to that black and white fade in that last image. Now we're going to go with a more filmic vibe. So we're going to have a little bit more grain, a little more vignetting. I might do a little bit of lens effects. So let's start this off by in our soft stylized folder, we're going to cycle through our different filmic black and white presets. We've gone through everything now except for the filmic black and whites. So we're going to go through and look and see what we like the best. I like the neutral. I think it looks very nice. Let's see. Let's try the filmic or the punchy. And I, I'm not sure if I like the punchy as much. I think it's cool, but I think I'm going to be liking the dark fade the most on this. I'm, I'm a big dark fade guy. And I do. I love the way, because the dark fade, you know, it really compresses the midtones. And so when we brighten it back up, we just see like a very flattering look over her skin. So this looks beautiful. I'm going to keep this right there. Uh, I love that look. We're at 1.3 on the exposure. It's really done as it is. I don't really need to do too much more. But what I'm going to do is fix my crop. Uh, and I'm going to go to a one-to-one. -one. So I love this square crop. You know, Dougie, uh, Dougie Gordon. Dougie Gordon. We love Dougie Gordon. Doug Gordon says he uses the square crop a lot because it actually kind of forces his clients to buy prints through his studio. And it does. And that's a, a very legitimate reason to use it. Now, that's not why necessarily we use it. I use it a lot because I just like the way it looks. But uh, it's a good reason to use it. So let's just pull up this uh, square crop a little bit. And then we're going to get it right in the right place. I want it to be kind of pretty symmetrical. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it looks nice right there. And uh, you know what I want to do is I want to create a nice little lens effect. So let's get a little lens blur going on, a little tilt shift kind of action. But what I want to do is instead of doing tilt shift, let's kind of mimic more of an old lens where we just kind of get the edges blurred out. And before we do that, actually, I do want to make one special effects adjustment. I want to boost my film uh, or my film grain. Now, we left the film grain a little more subtle for you all just because we're not sure, you know, what everybody wants as far as the film effects. So I always like to go a little bit higher than most. And so, you know, I end up just boosting my own personally. But I'm going to boost it up to heavy film grain. Choose whatever you guys like there. Now, what we're going to do is under a radial filter, we're going to go to the heavy D sharpen. It's right at the end of the special effects. Heavy D sharpen is going to create that lens baby effect or that, that blurry edge effect. Okay, so we're using a radial filter now and we're going to pull out the focus so that we get this kind of blur around the edges. So I'm just going to start with the center of her face and I'm going to pull out right to about there. And what I want to do is tweak the feathering so that I get a nice kind of graduation effect from, you know, basically the sharp areas to the unsharp areas. And I might even pull in a little bit of this uh, effect here. So let's pull it in a little bit because I want to affect basically even right above her eyes, like on this, uh, on this little veil, I want to start affecting it there. So let's zoom in and see if we're getting that. And if we're not, I can kind of compress this little oval a little bit more. Okay. Let's feather it a little more. Let's zoom in again and see. There we go. Now we can see it's kind of softly coming out right there. And that looks beautiful. I love that. You can see that edge effect. So again, if you don't have the preset, just hit pause and dial it in because this is a very simple preset uh, for brushes and it's great for creating this effect. So we get that nice blur right around the edges. And I would say this is done right where it is. I might tweak my exposure a little bit, maybe go up or down just to kind of get it to my, my taste, my personal taste. I like a little bit brighter on this one. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to crop in a tiny bit. Well, let's see. 
I kind of want to just get it so that either I have a little bit more black showing here or a little bit less black showing there. I'm not sure which yet. Let's see if I go in all the way, I'm taking out too much of our, our roses, unless I crop down onto her veil a bit, which I'm not I'm not opposed to. I kind of I don't mind that as much. Let's see what I like better though. I don't know what I like better. I like it all. I like it all with this one. All right, let's just go back to what we had. And I'm just gonna pull it over a little bit so we see a little bit more black, so it's not just a little tiny sliver. You know what? I don't like that. <laughs> let's pull it in. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with a little bit of cropping on the veil. I know some of you guys aren't gonna agree. You're gonna be like, why did you do that pie? And I'll be like, well, look, it was my vision, not yours. All right, so I'm just gonna crop in right about there. That looks fine to me. So we get that beautiful edge softening effect right around the roses. I think it looks great. Let's, uh, again, look at the before and the after. Here's the before of our image. We can do so many things with this image, but this is just one take on it, and I think that's beautiful. It looks awesome. Let's go through these settings and show you exactly what we're doing. So with the dark wash, we gotta raise our exposure quite a bit to 1.43 because we're pulling down so much of our midtones and, and highlights that we need to compensate for that. Again, with the highlights and whites being dropped, with our tone curve pulling down all of the contrast, we're adding shadows and blacks basically to the image. We're pulling down shadows and blacks to kind of increase the amount that's clipped, but we need to add contrast, otherwise it's gonna have, we're gonna have a very flat image. Now, if you wanna tweak contrast, you can. You can go over here and just kind of flip between and see what you like best, and I like it where we had it. But I think what also would look good with this image is a slight contrast reduction. Um, it's really just up to your taste and preference. You could even go a little bit higher. I like it right where we have it, right at the medium. So we're gonna leave it right there. Uh, with clarity, we left it at zero, but we can also tweak that and just see if we want a little bit less. Let's see if we want a little more softening. I think I like it at negative 10 instead of just zeroed out, so let's just leave it there. We have our tone curve, that's again adding those, uh, that's pulling down and clipping our, high, uh, our whites. We're pulling down all the highlights, midtones, even through the midtone shadows. We're bringing up the deeper shadows and up the blacks that we were getting our fade. We don't have any color toning applied to this. If we wanna check it out, we can just flip into our antique black and whites. We can apply any of the other dark washes and get the exact same look with just different toning. So if you like the more blue kind of cool toning to the dark wash, you can apply that. Uh, or we're gonna stick with a silver. You can even go with an amber or a bronze. I think all those look really lovely. Should we do an amber on this one just to say that we did it? Just to say that we did it? Nah, let's just keep it. I like it plain, plain and simple. Sorry, I'm kind of boring, boring pie. All right, let's go down. We don't have any black and white adjustments made. If we did want to, we could, but because this is a fade, we're not doing any of the uh, black and white mix tweaks on the reds, oranges, and yellows. Um, let's keep going down. We have our detail enhancements. Again, they're not gonna be fairly, they're not gonna be really much noticeable because we are adding a lot of grain. And with grain, we don't add noise reduction because that's just weird. Why would you do that? All right, this is actually a pre-crop vignette. You're not gonna notice this too much because we've cropped in so much on the image. If we did a post-crop vignette, you would, but with the pre-crop, you're not gonna see it. So I can just double click on that. It's gonna barely at all affect the edge of this frame and you don't really even tell. All right, here's our final grain settings of 70, 30, 30. Again, I took that up just because I kind of like a little bit extra grain in my images. That's it, everybody, for the settings. So here is the before and the after one more time, and we're done with this video, so I'll see you all in the next one.